Autumn's life hasn't always been a perfect melody. In fact, her surroundings were less than ideal. So what made the difference for her? Let's find out from songwriter, music producer, and Grammy winner, Autumn Rowe. Good morning, Autumn. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, I love your story um, and love your music. Okay, so let's start with your background. Uh, grew up in the South Bronx in the projects, lots of crime, as well as uh, several other things going on at the time. And we know that can be an uphill battle, but it doesn't necessarily have to define somebody. Absolutely. I mean, growing up where I come from, it's, you know, you definitely develop the mentality of like do or die. Mm -hmm. And you, you just have to decide, like, I'm either going to stay in these circumstances or I'm going to do something much bigger. And um, it's strange, even as like a little girl at like five years old, I told my mom I was going to be a writer. And I told my mom, I said, I'm going to be able to write my way out of everything. This is such a strange thing for a kid to say. And um, it, what kind of kept me going, the industry is very, very difficult. But what kept me going was I, I knew my circumstances are really difficult, but I said, if I can come out of this, this means anybody can come out of this. So if I can reach my goals and reach my dreams, this means every single kid in circumstances that they can't control, which are, you know, not ideal, can also do the same thing. And yeah. honestly, well, that you talk about you, the industry's tough, but what you grew up in was tough. And so to your point, you already had, I mentioned a resume earlier, you already had a resume of how to do tough, incredibly poor, one room apartment with your parents. Uh, your, your dad had some issues with drugs. Your mom worked multiple jobs. And so people can look at that and say, okay, well, that's the sad part. No, that's the part that gave you a work ethic as well. And you realize that yes, with determination, hard work, you can come out out of those things. All right, uh, music was one of those things that was a, an escape for you. I think sometimes we underestimate music and just say it's entertainment. It's a lot more than that. Oh man, music is spiritual. Music is, you know, music from the beginning of time has has gotten us through the hardest times. You know, before, before we had radio, before we had anything, we would sing, we would, songs tell stories. And um, music has always been that for me. It's always been an escape. You can just put on headphones or listen to the radio and all of a sudden it transports you to places you've never been. And I do not think I would be any, like, I mean, clearly music has gotten me here, but like, just as a child, the way I would feel when I would hear music, I just knew that life could be could be and would be better life could be a song all right you took tv shows uh tv show things that didn't have words to them and wrote lyrics to them just in case they wanted those uh but as you mentioned at that early age you already knew you wanted to be a writer uh, but how to get there is part of the journey as well you had seen a couple of times people in the business who uh you felt like could have advanced your career quicker fat joe you saw him at a uh, clothing store and then you wanted to ask his advice but you never did at 16 you met jay-z in the street buying diamonds of course, that's what Jay-Z does, just buy diamonds. But uh, you approached him and asked him about getting into the music business. And he said, give me a call. Did you? You know what? I He really did. And he spent a long time talking to me in the street. Um, and he gave me a phone number. And I, could, I, I was so shocked that he actually gave me a phone number to call at his record company that I did not call because I also didn't have any music. I was just a high school student in choir. So I'm like, what am I going to say to this record company? <laughs> like, I literally have nothing to offer. But you know what's, what's really so cool about this, though, is that, um, yes, there was nothing you felt like you could do at that moment, but I, I feel like it also served a different purpose. And it was kind of like little God winks in your life to say you're going in the right direction. Who runs into Jay-Z on the street buying diamonds and he gives you the phone number, right? Who runs into <laughs> Fat Joe? And I'm sure I was like, there we go. But uh, you, you, you still were, in, like you said, you were just in choir. Well, you were in four choirs at once. You began interning at the age of 16, you got to where you needed to go to be around the people who were doing what you wanted to do. And so it took a long time to develop your voice as a songwriter, but I, I, I hear lots of songwriters. Megan Trainer, she said she went, wrote thousands of songs before she had one that she felt like was a hit. And so um, it, it's a, that's a, a normal thing. But you, you worked 12 years before a significant paycheck. You weren't giving up. No, absolutely not giving up. Um, you know, I did the New York life where you, you sing backgrounds and you're in a band and you're in a wedding band and you sing jingles and you just work, you have 50,000 jobs. Like the craziest job I had, I used to sell karaoke machines at Costco. <laughs> I um, bought one. You know. <laughs> it was insane. Um, but you know, you just don't give up because this is 
like you like you said earlier, music chooses you. And I just I had to keep going and going and going. And um, it's most people I believe don't reach their goals in especially in music because they give up. Like just staying to it is the hardest thing because everything is against you. But if you really, really stick it out, anything is possible. Yeah, and I, not only in music, I think that's a, a big metaphor for, or just a, a great statement for everything. A lot of people have goals, dreams, hopes, uh, and sometimes you gotta realize when that might be your hobby, and then you have a job to pay for that hobby until that hobby can become, you know, your, 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 your living. Uh, but then you hit, you know, happiness performed by Alexis Jordan. Uh, I gotta ask you, as somebody who is a songwriter, you also are a great singer. You have a great voice. Has you, have you ever handed over a song and went, oh no, it's supposed to go up on that note? No, it's supposed to be done like this. You know, I I feel for the most part, most of the artists that cut songs I write, um, I'm just amazed by how good they are. Like, it's been very rare where an artist hasn't delivered a great vocal. I mean, yeah. often I feel like they surpass my vocal demo. Um, I've been pretty impressed by most artists. Yeah, perfect. Okay, you uh, that song actually became a FIFA kind of World Cup anthem, if you will, and has new life with Ed Sheeran on TikTok. Uh, you are a vocal coach on X Factor, America's Got Talent. Um, you collaborated with all the people I mentioned earlier, Dua Lipa, Zendaya, Pitbull, One Direction, um, Diana Ross, I still believe. Yes, Diana Ross, my gosh, that was a pinch me moment. I just <laughs> could not believe I got to work with Diana Ross, I mean, Diana Ross has influenced me so much. I mean, she's just one of the few living legends. And to hear her voice singing a song I wrote was just mind blowing. I'm st I'm still like, sometimes I think about it, I'm like, did that really happen? You yeah, know? just just know that I'm jealous of you on that one for sure, okay. But then the next one, working with John Batiste, uh, you, we are, and um, you wrote that in John's dressing room uh, at the Late Show? Yeah, in the late show, we build a little makeshift studio with a couple speakers, Kizzo and John and his band come in and, you know, we have keyboards and we had access, you know, to all these great instruments, but we were in like, I don't know, a seven by six dressing room. It was quite small, you know, we were just really tight and we, we didn't really leave the room. We had food delivered. This was like seven, eight days of just intense working red eyes like exhaustion yeah and it paid off because nominated for four grammys and then of course the the grammy for best album and that just had to be such a a sweet moment and a moment for you uh to take your mother and it's like for all that your mom did to get you through as a child so that you could focus on music to be able to take your mom to the grammys oh it's just a dream come true i mean you know, things didn't necessarily happen when I wanted them to in life, but they happened at the right time. And taking my mom to the Grammys was, it's just, it's what every kid dreams of, right? Every kid dreams of taking your mom to like the biggest moment in your life. And just for her to be there, to see that was such a privilege. And you know, the, the award we won was the last award of the night. And I didn't think we were gonna win because I didn't win anything the whole day. And, um, when we won, it was just like, I was in, just in a state of shock. Um, I, I couldn't I couldn't understand anything that was happening really, but you know, it's, it was just to have my mom there. It's just a memory that we'll have forever. Wow, all right, Adam, I know you have a new project that you're working on and we'll tell people about that in a second, actually that's, that's been released, but I wanna thank you so much for sharing your story with us this morning. Uh, is it gonna be in the form of a book soon? No, you know, a lifetime a movie, a movie. No, we need a silver screen movie is what we need. It's definitely a story like that. Um, you know, my mom and I, we watched Pursuit of Happiness at one point and we were like, wow, our life was actually considerably harder than that movie. Um, so yes, I would definitely be interested in, in doing this at some point. All right, that would be awesome. Okay, I'm, I'm standing in line to buy the first ticket, then I'll go back to my karaoke machine and start singing your songs. <laughs> Autumn, thank you very much. Thank you.